What's going on, YouTube? Now many people, including Mason and I, have complained about the large number of crossovers that look shockingly similar to each other. However, there are a few crossovers that are absolutely showstoppers, and this flagship Audi Q8 is one of them. That's why we're spending today with the latest 2020 example, this one being fully loaded at over $99,000. Of course, we do want to give a big thanks to Audi of Lexington for letting us borrow this Q8. And if you're in the market for any new Audi, make sure you stop by their dealership or visit them via their website, which we provided a link to in the video description. So with that all said, let's see if the Q8 is the best German luxury crossover. <laughs> so kicking things off here with the exterior styling, it'll certainly grab a lot of attention. Since it's no longer the first year of production, the year one package we had last year has been eliminated but all the cool styling elements from it will still stick around in different groupings. This model has the fantastic looking black optic package, which of course blacks out nearly the entire front end and makes things look very stealthy in dark colors or really bold in the lighter colors. In the US, we also have one other grill choice, which is a body colored grill as the standard option. Now turning to the headlights, of course they are fully LED on all models, but this prestige comes with the more advanced matrix lights. Now even though some of the special functionality is disabled in the US, they still have a cooler looking design. And finally I do want to mention that the ground clearance can vary a lot when you have selected the optional adaptive air suspension like we have. Now as far as the rest of the design, it's honestly just as exciting as the front. As a crossover coupe, the back does slope off aggressively, and then you have a really wide rear design that looks strikingly similar to the Lamborghini Urus. The width of the rear is emphasized by full length LED taillights, and since we have the prestige, both the headlights and the taillights have the cool entry animation party trick. Down at the bottom, you've got a dual exhaust setup, but the tips are fake like most recent Audis. But all in all, besides for that one little thing, it's really hard to say anything negative about the Q8's design. This is already a showstopper, and we haven't even gotten to the upcoming RS Q8 yet. Now setting off the design is this set of gorgeous 22 inch alloy wheels that we have. They are part of the S-Line Plus package for Premium Plus and Prestige trims. But there are also several more conservatively styled 20, 21, and 22 inch alloy options. Checking out the mirrors, they are heated and power folding on all trims, but you will need at least the Premium Plus for auto dimming and blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert. And as far as your other safety systems, all models come with forward emergency braking and new for 2020 auto high beam headlights. Prestige includes the driver's assistance package and Premium Plus can add it, which would give you access to lane keeping assist, traffic sign recognition, and adaptive cruise control with traffic jam assist. But anyways guys, that's it for the stylish exterior. So now let's see the high-tech cabin before taking it out for a drive. So walking up to the 2020 Q8, of course you do have Audi Smart Entry System, as well as their newest key fob, which basically is piano black, and then you do have metal trim along the sides. And then of course to get inside the vehicle itself, all you gotta do is just grab the handle since there is a sensor and it will unlock. So taking a peek here inside the cabin, uh, as you can see, 
This does have the latest Audi design language. Um, definitely looks very cool, just like it did last year. Now, as far as your interior material and color options are concerned, uh, just like every single Audi model, you're going to start out with real leather, and you've got four different choices, black, Saiga beige, Okapi brown, and Pando gray. Now, when you got, grab the luxury package, like what we have here today, um, that upgrades you to the very premium Valcona leather, and that comes in black, Saiga beige, or Sarda brown. Now, as far as your wood trims, I'm not going to talk about every single one of them, but you do have four different choices. And when you go for the luxury package, uh, you have the exclusive basalt eucalyptus trim, which looks very, very nice. Now, turning over here to your door trim, of course, it is beautifully appointed. You do have uh, very premium leather that goes all through the armrest area, Alcantara through the middle. And then with the luxury package, you have full leather across the top of the door trim as well, again with the double stitching. Here's your wood trim. This is an electronic door handle, fully aluminum of course. You have two person memory seating standard equipment and all four of your windows are one touch automatic. Now coming down here to your seats, the standard model is going to come with an eight way power adjusting seat, but as you can probably tell, uh, we have a lot more ways of adjustment than just that. Um, with this luxury package, we have 18 ways of adjustment, plus you also have power massage. And then as far as the leather quality, it is absolutely phenomenal. This Balcona leather is beautiful, feels extremely soft and extremely supple, and it has a very appealing stitching design as well. I did mention a couple things as we get in here. Uh, with the Prestige model, we have the double pane glass as well as the soft closed doors. But, anyways, looking around the cabin itself, it continues to be an absolutely beautiful place to spend time, and it gets even more so here in 2020. Now, what I mean by that is you obviously you have high quality materials on every model. But on this luxury model, we have even more leather than we did last year. So across your upper dash here, this is all leather. But as you can see, even that extreme upper area for 2020, that now has leather as well. Now as you drop down, you have the piano black trim, the real wood that runs all through here. More of that through here as well. Uh, you do have leather across the center console. And like I was also saying, new for the luxury package is the top of the door trim. But anyways, to start up the Q8, of course you do have push button start. Now of course, as you expect to see on a high-end Audi, we do have virtual cockpit. Um, this is version 2.0, which basically just has faster processing, a little bit different graphics. Um, now, one of your 2020 changes is that this is now included on your premium trim. Now, in addition to virtual cockpit, if you choose prestige level, uh, you will also have a head-up display. Obviously, this can display a lot more information um, once you're underway. It has your navigation instructions and stuff like that. Now, coming back to the steering wheel, we do have Audi's latest design. Obviously, it's fully leather wrapped. Uh, you will also have heating if you go for the cold weather package. Um, as far as what's around it here, we have rain sensing wipers. Those are standard equipment on all the models. Um, and it is always power adjusting as well. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about storage. Now, I'll be honest, this is not one of the strong suits really of the Q8. Now, this is not a massive SUV by any stretch of the imagination, but um, still, it's not a great deal of storage. So you have basically a little bit right here. You have this pad, which is a wireless phone charger on Premium Plus and Prestige, and they've got a little bit of space right here. But that more or less is the full extent of your interior storage. Um, you have your two USB ports. And then you basically got a little bit of space here that you could stick something in the cup holders. But other than that, that's pretty much all the storage. So I will say it's a little bit smaller than you'd expect from, you know, a pretty decently sized SUV. Now 
Now like most Audi models here, we do have their electronic shifter. Very simple to use. You just pull back for drive. You can bump to the right and do some manual shifting with this electronic shifter, or of course you can just use these standard paddle shifters. Then to go into reverse, you just go up the opposite direction. And then when you do, you will find a 360 degree camera system fire up on the Premium Plus and the Prestige. Um, now this is one of the best, if not the best, 360 degree camera system I've ever used. And then of course the real cool party trick is hitting the 3D mode. And then you can just pan around this vehicle completely um, and see all of your surroundings. And it is stitched together like perfectly. You can't even see where any of the cameras like meet. And then of course you can just press the P to park and you do have an electronic parking brake as well. Now working our way on up the dashboard here, the next stop is going to be our audio system. Now I'm really excited today to show you guys the very best audio system you can get on the Q8. A 1920 watt, 19 speaker, Bang & Olsen advanced 3D sound system. Uh, this by itself is a $5,000 option. Um, so I've never heard this before, so let's go ahead and take a sample and see how good it is. to say sound quality is absolutely stunning certainly one of the best sound systems I've ever heard and honestly it's worth getting it just for how cool it is to watch the tweeters pop out of the dashboard when you fire up the car definitely a really cool party trick um, for this flagship SUV okay so now let's go ahead and kind of get into our business here with our two displays um, so basically we have an 8.6 inch display down here and then a 10.1 inch display up here. They combine to make up basically your climate control and most of the buttons inside of the system. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start down here on your lower area. Now one thing I do want to point out is this row of buttons here, this would be represented physically if you go for the premium plus or the premium model. So only on the prestige does this become capacitive touch for whatever reason. But as far as the rest of it, up here above it, uh, this will always be the same. This is your climate controls. Now, uh, it is three zone automatic on your premium, four zone automatic on the premium plus and the prestige model. Now, as far as the whole entire system, I'll go ahead and point out something unique about it is it's not just touch sensitive, uh, but it also has kind of a haptic feedback, a force touch type of feature. Um, so if you listen closely, you actually, you can touch something, but it doesn't register. You can see that it knows what I've touched but it doesn't register until I press down. Now, as far as your seat heating, it is standard three-stage heating, uh, and then you also have three-stage ventilation if you go for the Premium Plus or the Prestige model. Press these three little dots. This is where you can get to some additional functions of the climate control system. So we do have the advanced ionizer. Uh, we also have uh, the fragrance system, and then we have the heated steering wheel button as well. I'll go ahead and turn that off. And then up above that, you'll find another row of buttons. Uh, that's for a few extra things, such as your garage door opener, head up display settings, auto start, stop, defeat button, and hill descent control. And then that brings us up here to the main 10.1 inch display. Now this is where MMI touch response uh, lives. Like I said, the bottom one is basically for climate and a few other inputs, but this is where the main stuff happens. So we'll go ahead and take a quick look at this system. So like I said, I am just going to keep this brief in this specific video because we will have a dedicated tech help video available for those of you who want to learn more about the system. A link to that will be provided in the video description. Um, however, I'll just go ahead and hit a few of the highlights. As far as actual functionality, 
Obviously, we do have built-in navigation, as Audi is famous for, and it is exactly the same here as it is in your virtual cockpit. So you've got the full Google Earth satellite maps, so they're extremely crisp, extremely detailed, um, and nearly no one else in the industry does maps as well as Audi. Uh, the other big thing I want to point out is you've got standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto that's located here in the smartphone interface. Um, and you'll notice wireless Apple CarPlay. So you can use that wirelessly. Um, there's only a few automakers that offer this currently, and Audi is one of them here in the Q8. And then moving on up here, we do have an auto dimming mirror, frameless design with the built-in compass. And then your Homelink Universal remotes are located down in the display, like I already pointed out. And coming this direction here, you will also find a standard panoramic moonroof. As you can see, this goes all the way back to the behind the second row, um, and the front portion does open up a really large amount, as well as having a built-in wind buffer. And while we're up here, I will point out with this luxury package, this headliner is a very beautiful and uh, awesome feeling Alcantara. Definitely makes things feel um, even more luxurious than they already are. All right, so that is all the stuff to look at here in the front part of this very luxurious cabin. So now I'll go ahead and hand it off to my brother Mason, who will check out all the features in the back. Alrighty, and of course checking out the rear door trim of this Q8, uh, you are going to have an absolutely fantastic one from top to bottom. So you have leather all the way through this upper portion, some more beautiful wood trim, Alcantara, and leather where your arm will rest of course. In addition to that, you do have a little uh, ashtray here, as well as your own um, rear window sunshades. As you can see, all you have to do is uh, use that little switch, and you do have rear window sunshades for both of the rear seats back here. Now in addition to that, we do have some storage below. And getting in, I do want to mention uh, that the seats do also uh, slide forward and backward. Now, of course, this is Audi's flagship SUV, so as you would expect, it does have an absolutely fantastic amount of amenities back here. So, of course, you're going to find rear vents standard across all of the models, and down below this is uh, where you will find all the controls for that. So, this is actually kind of like a touchscreen type of thing. It is completely black if the vehicle is off, um, and you have all of your controls. This particular model has four-zone climate, uh, however, the base, more basic models will have three-zone. Um, so each passenger back here can adjust their temperature just like this. And in addition to that, uh, we do also have uh, three-stage heated rear seats, which are included in the cold weather package. And these are your zones right there. And further below that, you will also find plenty of connections. So you do have a 12-volt power outlet, as well as two uh, charging USB ports. And I do also want to point out uh, that you do have vents here in the B pillar as well. Now, as far as the rear legroom is concerned, I'm going to tell you that it's very, very impressive back here as well. Um, so we have 40 inches of rear legroom and 38 inches of rear headroom, um, which actually places it quite a bit above uh, the Audi Q7. It's also larger than BMW X6, um, so you're really going to have a ton of space back here. Um, behind Drew's seating position, I have about, as you can see, I would say a foot and a half, if not two feet of space. I can fully stretch out and it's just a really, really comfortable place to spend time back here because it doesn't have that third row to cramp things up. Now heading around to the tailgate, it is hands-free power and that's standard across all of the models. So all you have to do is wave your foot under the bumper to open it up. And once inside the Q8's trunk, you're going to once again find a very large amount of space, especially for its competitors. 
Um, so you're going to come in at 29 cubic feet of space behind the second row seats uh, and that expands all the way up to 68 cubic feet of space if you fold them. Now like I mentioned that is larger than the BMW X6, uh, the GLE Coupe as well as um, only a few cubic feet smaller than the Audi Q7 in its max configuration. Um, so you're really not losing much cargo space for the good looks. And as far as how they have finished it back here, uh, you do have LED lighting, a cargo cover, and right here you will notice these buttons. Uh, these are to raise and lower the rear air suspension. Um, so if you need to fit something big in here, uh, you can lower it so you don't have to lift it as high. As well as a 12 volt power outlet and some storage cubbies. And up underneath of the floor here, we do have a spare tire. Coming over to the passenger seat, it is the same adjust adjustments as the driver, so you're going to be looking at 16 ways of adjustment, as well as uh, massaging functions on this fully loaded model. And in addition to that, you do also have two-person memory over here as well. Now looking down, the glove box is uh, quite good sized. It opens really wide. Um, and goes back a really good distance, so this is a very good amount of space. Of course, it is felt lined. And up top, we do have a sun visor with a light and mirror. And it does also detach and extend. But anyway, guys, that covers all of the main features about the Q8's rear areas. So now let's go ahead and take it out on the road and see how it performs there. Alright, so first taking off here in our 2020 Audi Q8. Uh, you can definitely tell power is plentiful in this car. Um, this is Audi's latest uh, powertrain setup. So what you're looking at is the 3 liter turbo V6 engine. Um, that's paired with all the mild hybrid electrical components. And more or less, the main purpose of it is advanced auto start-stop, which we'll get into as we go along. But as far as the specs on the engine, 335 horsepower, which is uh, right in line with what all the main competitors produce in their standard configurations. Um, there is no upgraded engine option available right at this moment, but as those of you know, there is the RS Q8 which is coming out and that's going to be the upcoming performance king yeah i can't wait for that one <laughs> that's very very exciting to get a hold of that here shortly <laughs> yeah it's, it feels very stout um, 0 to 60 is 5.6 seconds as rated by Audi. Um, you know, and it, it feels that fast. That's pretty much in line with like, um, you know, a Q5, but this is a much bigger vehicle. <laughs> yeah, one of the things I really like about that is uh, I do like the engine note. Um, it, it's a uh, very um, subtle. It's not loud and um, not a lot of the noise is going to penetrate into the super quiet cabin um, But what does I think it sounds really good. It's a nice raspy note. Yeah. Yeah But while you're talking about sound <laughs> it is worth noting it is really hushed in here Honestly, it's got to be up there with one of the top
I mean, as you would expect, this is a, a flagship luxury German, you know, German luxury SUV. Um, pretty much all of the competition, like the X7, of course, that's going to ride good too. Um, but you are going to find that exceptional uh, ride quality in this model. And one of the things worth noting is that with this model's adaptive chassis package, we do have a four corner air suspension. Um, and it really handles bumps really well. Um, we went through a parking lot the, uh, and it just we went through a parking lot with the speed bumps and you can barely feel it at all. Um, it's really quite remarkable that any type of vehicle can have a ride as good as this. And while you're talking about that adaptive chassis package, one of the unique things that comes along with that four corner air suspension um, is four-wheel steering so that's very interesting to have that on an SUV but I can attest uh, turning around and stuff really it is helpful it does tighten the turning circle of course and then you know you have the handling benefits um, that you see as you go along Now, as far as the transmission, what we have on board is an 8-speed automatic um, standard quattro all-wheel drive, of course, like every Audi. Um, it is full-time, so traction is definitely not an issue. Um, as far as the transmission, very smooth shifting. Um, does a really good job, especially it's got, you know, a more complicated job to be yeah. working with, you know, the advanced auto start-stop and all the electric components, you know, so it's... It is a more difficult thing to make smooth, and uh, they have done a really good job with that. Now when we come up to this next red light here that I'm approaching, um, I'll expand this out and I'll ask you to pay attention to kind of the tachometer here, and you can kind of see the advanced auto start stop um, it, as it works. But of course, Murphy's <laughs> Law, if you ever want to stop at a red light, that will be the one single time you won't stop at the red light. Well, you'll come up here in a second, so... We'll get to a red light. Okay, now I'm pretty confident we're coming to a stop here. And there it is, it's off. So, yeah, see if you're paying attention. I'm even still in motion right now. Okay, well, we did have a refire just because I was thought I was coming back onto the gas. But as you were paying attention there, um, it shut off as we were coming to a stop. And that's the advanced auto start stop at work. It just works more often, um, is more aggressive. And as you can see, you kind of have the coasting ability. So you come off the gas and it shuts off the engine just to save some fuel while you're doing that coasting um, and coming to a stop. Now you've heard me say several times uh, about the auto start stop system in the uh, Mercedes models, the GLE and the GLS, um, which are competitors to this. And uh, they'd use a very similar system. And th between the two of them, they're very, they operate very similarly. They're definitely the best auto start stop systems in the industry. I can pretty easily um, declare that. Um, they operate, the only difference I'm noticing is just is uh, this does not launch on the battery power. The yeah. GLE will, it will do the same thing where it turns off as you come to a stop. It'll also kind of launch off before the engine takes off. Uh, this will go ahead and start the engine as soon as you get back on the gas. Um, but other than that, they operate very similarly and uh, both extremely smoothly. And you might be curious to see if that auto start stop system was uh, for a fuel economy benefit and this whole mild hybrid thing um, and the answer to that is probably going to be no i think it's really mainly focusing on the smoothness aspect of the powertrain uh, because the fuel economy is a little bit less uh, than you would expect um, so what we're going to have in this model is 17 city 21 highway 18 combined um, which is decreased one mpg from last year i guess in the difference of ratings um, and it's <laughs> A full 4 MPG worse than an equivalent all-wheel drive BMW X6. 
Um, so I'm not really sure exactly why That's the field. It current. really a, seems to be a great mystery. We've discussed it. Yeah, it's hard to come up with a reason. I guess I really haven't talked about the steering as far as uh, the comfort mode. Um, it's very light. Uh, it looks like a lot of Audi SUVs. It definitely veers towards the light end of things. Um, you know, just to emphasize comfort. But when you put in dynamic mode, as things really tighten down. It's always very fast responding, no matter what mode you put it in. Yeah, and as an adaptive air suspension, uh, you also notice changes with that when you go into dynamic mode. You know, so this is a very, yeah. it actually changes stuff, you know. A lot of things, you have these modes to play with, but in this vehicle, you really are adapting the way the car feels. But all in all, really, it's, it's hard to find things bad to say about this. I mean, it really just kind of combines so many different aspects, like I already kind of alluded to. This can be just outrageously comfortable. You know, you can have put it in the comfort-oriented steering. You have an adaptive air suspension, so you can go over bumps and stuff, and it feels like an Audi A8 almost. And, uh, you know, then you have dynamic mode, and you can really firm things up. The suspension feels firmer, uh, really reduces body roll increases the throttle response i mean you really kind of have something that has a lot of different character choices um you know it can kind of be the best of whatever uh, an owner is expecting and um you know com combined with the way that it looks which is phenomenal it's uh, really just a fantastic flagship suv from audi Alrighty, and now that you've seen all the awesome features that this Q8 has, you might be curious as to how much it cost. Uh, and this is a flagship Audi SUV, so it is going to be priced accordingly. So for the very base premium model, that's going to be $68,200. The premium plus is $72,200. And then finally, you have the top-end prestige model, which is what we have, and that's $77,700. Now keep in mind though that Quattro is included, so all-wheel drive is standard. Um, and as far as how that uh, increases from the 2019 model, it's about $1,000 on all the trim levels. Now this particular one, as you might have found out throughout the review, is completely fully loaded with pretty much everything you can throw on the Q8. Uh, so we do have the optional uh, gray paint for $595, the luxury package for $6,150, for $6, we also have the advanced Bang & Olufsen 3D sound system for five grand. Uh, we have the adaptive chassis package for $2,750, the S-Line Plus package for $2,250, the extended leather package for $1,100, the Audi beam rings for $790, the towing package for $750, the cold weather package for $600, uh, and then we have the finally the destination charge of $995, um, and then all told, this particular model as equipped comes in at $99,430, um, which is definitely a large chunk of change for a new vehicle. Um, but I have to say, I've said it time and time, I mean, this is actually like my favorite SUV ever. Um, if you have 100 k to spend on a, a new car, then please come check this out because I'm pretty sure you won't be disappointed. Well guys, we hope you enjoyed watching the first in-depth look at the 2020 Audi Q8 Prestige. We really appreciate you watching, and be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already, and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.